our usual orientation is one of being a separate, limited entity within this boundless universe, feeling very small and powerless, always craving a deep connection with the entirety of what is, seeking a way to heal the divide. The way we try to fix that is that we cling to and we push away. Instead, it's about the reality of non-grasping. Reality does not grasp. There's no aversion. You are this open and divided awareness and within you as the great meditator are many objects of meditation. And that's a noticing, not a doing. It's not a removing. It's not even an including, really, because it is all inclusive already. Nothing is static. Everything is always shifting, yet reality in and of itself, whatever it is, is constant. That's already the primary condition, is that freedom, it is nirvana. All you've done is trick yourself into thinking that you're not that. It's a kind of going, well, okay, let's investigate this. And you investigate, what is my absolutely direct experience? It's just saying this. We can call it this, we can call it experience, we can call it awareness, whatever you want to call it. There's lots of words for it, but also no words can possibly catch it. It's like the sky, it's open, it's completely ungraspable, yet it appears graspable, just this whole moving river, always shifting, always changing, just completely fresh and new every single moment. And there's no grasping whatsoever involved in that. You're listening to the Non-Duality Podcast. This is Nick Hyam from nisagayoga.com. Paul Dobson is here with me for another direct and honest exploration of this. What is grasping? Grasping is clinging, often called attachment, holding on to something psychologically, isn't it? Mm. This is me, this is, this is mine, this is how it should be. When actually, that's not the way things are. Do you find a preference in existence, really? Do you find existence grasping or pushing away certain aspects of itself? I mean, when you really look, you don't. So, yes, we can talk about non-grasping, non-attachment, but it's not a practice. It's not something you can do. Mm. Nirvana is not some far-off goal that can be attained through years of effort. It is a state of being you can realize at any moment. It's simply to, to look in a very direct way, to be aware that there's no grasping here. There is no aversion. There's the flow of life, exactly how it is. Yeah, everything just is as it is, isn't it? Mm. It's not like we need to become non-attached. It's actually just seeing that you can't grasp. There's nothing to grasp onto and there's no need to stop grasping. It's not, mm. there's not actually anything grasping onto anything here. Um, it's everything is just flowing exactly as it is, regardless of your thoughts and ideas about it. It, it. Even those thoughts and ideas are part of that river of flow. And if you can see that, you're kind of free of the whole, the whole thing. It's like you don't need to get involved in the thoughts and ideas and whether or not you should be attached or grasping or I need to do this and that practice and purify myself. And eventually, maybe one day I can stop grasping. It's like... Well, no, it's actually just this whole moving river, always shifting, always changing, just completely fresh and new every single moment. And there's no grasping whatsoever involved in that. Um, there's nothing to grasp onto. You know, I always use the same metaphor, but it's like falling off a cliff and trying to grasp a rock that's also falling with you. It's like, well, what are you grasping at there? You'll just grasp it at something that's also falling with you. Mm. So mm. <laughs> you're not actually grasping at anything. And that's our actual condition. We're falling as infinity into infinity so we're not actually falling and we're not, there's nothing to grab, grab onto and there's nothing to land on. Yeah. The bad news is you're falling. The good news is there's no ground. <laughs> yeah. So, how, I mean, what's wrong with falling if there's nothing to land on? Like, falling's fun. The, the problem with falling is yeah. the, the idea that you're going to fall onto something and die, isn't it? And, but if you're falling into nothing, then it's just exhilarating. There's always a free fall because we can't, no, we can't really know what's happening. We can't really find a, a conclusive platform or position from which to sit or on which to grasp. 
there's always this flowing state of existence and we could say that that's a sort of constant free falling into itself you're falling into yourself falling in love with yourself and look at this rich outpouring of yourself all of these apparent forms are your expression and you're always falling in love with those expressions whether you know it or not that outpouring is nothing but an outpouring of love well, it is. I mean, if you because it's not us and then reality, we are reality. Um, it's so free and unconditionally loving to itself that here's what we have. It appears it can appear as absolutely anything. Mm. Um, it is disorientating may, only because we have so strongly believed ourselves to be a human being in a world. <laughs> and the actual condition is so incomprehensible that when you kind of see it, even just for a moment, what's going going on? And what you are, it's like, whoa, f- <laughs> I can't, yeah. I can't get a handle on anything. This is, you know, I'm infinity falling into affinity as infinity. I thought I was just a person trapped in a world. Like, and the thing is you go, well, I want to get there, whatever that is. Yes. I see something true that I want, but I, I keep taking myself as a human in the world. How do I get from here to there? And by doing that, you're actually covering over the whole thing and creating another veil. You know, you're creating a like an imaginary mm. wall between you and and what you are. Here is there. There is no here and there. What you are is that, you know. Just noticing. It is, yeah. A noticing yeah, of what is noticing. rather than a doing to what is. And even the doing can be noticed. I, you know, really we're talking about the nature of reality in this podcast. And the nature of reality is non-grasping you know that non-grasping is built into reality there's no grasping in reality there's no aversion in reality Mm. so the cessation of grasping or aversion isn't something you can do our usual orientation is one of being a separate limited entity within this boundless universe Mm. feeling very small and powerless always craving a deep connection with the entirety of what is mm. experiencing that as a kind of disconnect um, and longing seeking a way to heal the divide the way we try to fix that or try to heal that divide between ourselves as a limited individual and the boundlessness out there is that we cling to and we push away mm. instead it's about the reality of non-grasping reality does not grasp Mm. And that's a noticing, not a doing. It's not a removing. It's not even an including, really, because it is all inclusive already. Nothing is static. Everything is always shifting. Yet reality in and of itself, whatever it is, is constant. Yeah. That's already the condition, isn't it? That's already the primary condition is that freedom. It is nirvana. All you've done is trick yourself into thinking that you're not that. It's a kind of going, well, okay, let's investigate this. Can I say for sure that I am a human in a world and I'm trapped? And you investigate what is my absolutely direct experience. You know, Mm. it's not saying anything about humans and worlds. It's just saying this, you know, it's just saying experience. It's saying, well, it's not saying anything, but we can call it this. We can call it experience, call it awareness, whatever you want to call it. Use that as a starting point, you know, and then see, well, Am I then drawing in this human idea on top of that? Am I drawing in this entity that's trapped in something called a world? Mm. Because you get little fragments of sensation that you later translate as this is me, this is an entity. But all all, all that is is more experience, just pure flow of that waterfall of experience it's not mm. saying none of it says within itself that it's an entity mm. or that it's separate from anything it's just more of this seamless experiencing that's it in this podcast we don't speculate we do examine we do consider we do reflect with close attention but we don't theorize so we're always just asking what is all you find is reality there's no such thing as unreality But we do have to go beyond language and perception, beyond thinking and our human orientation as separate entities through, as you say, direct experiencing. But forget speculation. What can you be certain of? What can you discover here and now? What is there evidence for? 
what is factual. It's this. It's what is here. It's not like we, we arrive at a fixed position, nor do we settle. Mm. Life is always in this constant flux and flow. We don't ever find a position or a, a mindset that we arrive at and say, this is the way things are. Because before you know it, life will pull the rug out from beneath your feet and upset any theory or upset any position and say, actually, no, it's, it's like this too. Mm. Ultimately, that's what we find, isn't it? We find yes and no. Mm. Whenever you really inquire into either side of a polarity, you find the same, the same isness, whatever that is. So it's not really paradoxical. Yes, we can dispute the various experiences or the various aspects we can be aware of, but we can't dispute, we can't doubt the actuality of that utter openness of experiencing that we can be sure of. Yeah. And that's not even a position because it's so flux like that you can't find a static point within it to say it's like this, it's like that. There is just that, that ever shifting certainty, which sounds like a contradiction, but that seems to be what we've got going on here that we're absolutely engaged with. Yeah. The potential problems with spiritual paths is that most expect that there will be some conclusion at the end, that it all will tie up. But there aren't conclusions in infinity. Mm. There's lots of words for it, but also no words can possibly catch it. It's like the sky, it's open, it's completely ungraspable. Yeah. The Occam's razor approach surely is going to be nearer to the truth. The fewest assumptions, the fewest speculations. The only problem with concepts is that they give us appearance of crystallizing or concretizing what is. Concepts don't have the monopoly on reality, and yet we think they do. That's suffering. Actually, to realize the ungrasping nature of reality, that is the freedom we're talking about, really. And it's a matter of noticing. As soon as you try to be at peace with what is, you're in a state of disharmony. So it's recognizing that what is, is at peace. Yeah. This is an interesting point, actually, because... Well, peace is the st natural state. Peace, peace is what is, actually. Yeah. What this is, in, is inherently peaceful. Not that peaceful as a concept and word and description can possibly grasp it, but no. what is, is inherently peaceful. And that's what people tap into when they feel peace, I think. The love kind of just naturally pours forth as itself. Totally unconditional love. Not, it, not a love that has to appear a certain way. Yeah. Just notice what is. You know, you don't have to allow the positive and the negative to be as it is. It will be as it is. Anyway, it's the mind that deems things as good or bad, positive or neg negative, and it will continue to do that. Just let it do its thing. Well, whether you let it do its thing or not, it will do its thing. Just notice it and don't take it so seriously <laughs> or personally. As life, you are free to express exactly how you are being expressed right now. There is this expression of attachment and aversion, grasping and pushing away. But you can, you can notice those patterns that then that tendency towards attachment just naturally falls away because it's not, it's not kind of refueled by trying to do one thing or the other. Then the reality of non-attachment, of non-grasping reveals itself. Mm you can always come back to direct experience and you can see f for sure what's true what's not you know that's a good a good exploration but as you say there's no there is no wrong way of exploring this like and so people say should i meditate should i not meditate well i meditate i i, I really enjoy meditation meditation never stops it's just meditation you know meditation it ha takes a different form it takes a different a form mm. of me with my eyes closed uh, in a deep state of whatever and then it takes the form of me going to work and in my car and driving and stuff it's not like you know it's a different form of noticing mm. well the real question is when are you not meditating yeah but that's yeah it. you are life and you are meditating upon yourself at all times yes you are this open and divided awareness experiencing consciousness and within you as the great meditator the one meditator are many objects of meditation yeah it's, it can only be itself. It's not some outside, something outside of it. You're kind of outside and in it at the same time, aren't you? Like, yeah. 
this is all you <laughs> like get over it like you know there's no point accepting or reject rejecting any of it because it's all you it's all what is yeah <laughs> something's happening now i can't i mean this is really happening like i don't know what it is but it's re- we can say what like it's like a dream it could be a simulation it could be this it could be that it could be all inside god's head it could be i don't know fill in the blank but it's re- whatever it is it's really happening like this this is happening right now i know i cannot say what that is that is happening but there's a happening here for sure um and we call it we can call it maybe awareness or i more directly would be experience because awareness kind of goes well i'm aware of something but if there's only awareness what am i aware of if it's only itself what am i aware of you know it's appearing within itself to itself it's like it's mirrored itself maybe it could be said but so there's just this <laughs> happenings probably closest or experiencing you know there's just this i mean what is it and as a byproduct that happens to be a good investigation to have if you're suffering as well mm. like okay what is the suffering you know use that same investigation can i even know what suffering is if mm. you don't know what it is how can you say whether it's good or bad you know it's like there has to be an idea about what it is in order for it to be bad you know there has to be an idea that this is you know some interpretation some conceptualization of it ironically seeing this clearly though it kind of frees you from the whole thing doesn't it yeah. it's like you're kind of free you've kind of tapped into that unconditional freedom that allows all of it and so you kind of you're free from it but you're still involved in it you know 